All right. This unit, a big thing, is on trigonometric identities. What is a trig identity? It's a statement that is true for all variables that are defined. So you already know some trig identities. Some examples of ones that you already know are in the box here. You know that cosecant is 1 over sine, that secant is 1 over cos, that cotangent is 1 over tan. You also know that tan is sine over cos, and that cotangent is cos over sine. So we're allowed to use certain facts that we know to help prove more things that are always true. For example, you could rearrange some of these ones and you could say that I know that cosecant times sine is always equal to 1. I know that secant times cos is always equal to 1 and cotangent times, cotangent is 1 over tan, so that means cotangent times tangent is equal to 1. You might also want to write for these ones, if you know cosecant is 1 over sine, then you know that sine is 1 over cosecant. And cos is 1 over secant. And tangent is 1 over cotangent. So a, a big part of this unit is proving identities. And the sheet that I just handed out has a bunch to prove. So we're going to go through a couple together. The sheet starts off really easy and increases in difficulty as it goes along, okay? As they increase in difficulty, we have to add some more strategies to what we already know. But then we're going to start off, if we look at question number five, it says cos of t times secant of t equals one. We want to prove that cos of t times secant of t is equal to one. Now some rules with proofs. What I'm going to get you to do every time that we do a proof, and I have extra loose leaf here because you will need, if you don't have your own loose leaf, I'll start it here, grab a piece if you need, and pass it on. The first thing you're going to do is rewrite what you want to prove. So we're, we want to prove that cos of t times secant t is equal to 1, and then we draw a line where the equal sign is. Because we don't know that this is true, and we want to prove that it's true, we're not allowed to move things from one side of the equation to the other side of the equation. What we want to do is rearrange one side of the equation so that it matches up perfectly with the other side. In some ways, identities are a little bit like puzzles. You're trying to rearrange things so that both sides are equal to each other. And what we have as tools so far are these identities that we already know. We know that cosecant's 1 over sine. We know secant's 1 over cos. We know cotangent's 1 over tan. We can change tan to sine over cos. We can change cotangent to cos over sine. So when we look at this first example, we say, OK, if I'm looking at the left-hand side, is there something I could change? Well, I know that secant is 1 over cos. And this is where the work with fractions that we did at the beginning becomes so important. Because how do we multiply fractions? Well, this would be cos t over 1. I'd multiply the tops, I'd multiply the bottoms. Do I have any factors the same? Could I simplify anything? Yes. I could simplify cos divided by cos would just be 1. At this point, I'm now able to get 1 on this side. 
we have proven what we wanted to. On the left-hand side, so on a proof, we always talk about a left side of our proof and a right side of our proof. And the equal sign separates the left side from the right side. What we've done now is we've manipulated the left side so that it matches perfectly with the right side. And once the two match, you're basically done. We just have to write a final statement. So our final statement says left side equals right side. We've, proved, we've said our left side is equal to our right side. And then you're basically done at that point. However, I like to, a lot of mathematical proofs end with QED. It's Latin for something. I think it's like quad erat demonstratum or something like that. My Latin's probably terrible. But it means what has been asked for has been shown or been demonstrated. So you asked me to prove this, and I was able to prove it. And then me personally, I always add a little box with fancy shading afterwards. It just makes me feel good. Um, you can add whatever symbol you want at the end if you want to use a box with shading. You don't have to put anything there. Some people put smiley faces. Um, this too, in one of my first math textbooks, every proof ended with a little box with shading. So for whatever reason, I still do that. Okay? You don't need to do that. They're not going to dock marks if you don't have a little symbol at the end. But it is typical, if you read some magazines, some magazines end every article with a symbol when they tell you the article's done. This is especially important in magazines which have a little bit of an article, then seven pages of ads. Have you ever been? And then you, oh, there's a little bit more of my article, and then there's more ads, and then you're like, when, is my article over? And often they'll have a symbol at the end. I know, like, McLean's article has a little Canadian flag with an M in it. And when you get to that, you know, okay, they're not going to keep going. The article's over. Anyway, so I have that little box to show that we're done. So there's proof number one. We manipulate both sides until we get the left side equal to the right side, and then we're done. So let's look at one that's a little bit more complicated. Let's go to number 12. Of course, you have to do the ones in between. Number 12 says, starts off by asking you to prove that secant theta over cosecant theta is equal to tan of theta. So one of the strategies that you're going to clue on very early in the identities unit is that you can change things to sine and cos. Every single trig function has a way to change it to sine or cos. How can I change secant? It's 1 over cos. I like to use thicker, longer lines for the main dividing. Secant's 1 over cos. What's cosecant? One over sine. What can I change tan to? If I wanted to change everything to sine and cos, I could change tan to sine over cos. OK. We need to get our left side and our right side to be the same. And one of the biggest strategies, which the very first activity we did today is, if you can write both sides as a single fraction in lowest terms, there's a good chance you'll prove your identity. So on the left-hand side, I don't have a single fraction yet. I have a fraction divided by a fraction. What's my fraction rule for that? Multiply by the reciprocal. So I would go 1 over cos times by sine theta over 1. And how do I multiply fractions? Multiply my numerators, multiply my denominators. And now that I've got a single fraction on that side, I look, and sure enough, both sides are the same. So we can now write our statement.
There we are.